Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Kania. Today we're going to be taking a look at identifying warblers when you're standing under a tree and you look up and all you can see are the birds underparts. The DuPage Birding Club Education Channel will be discussing all things bird related. And as I mentioned, today we'll be looking at warblers from below and this is part two of a two part series. When I started this project, I thought about the fact that we have 35 warbler species that show up in DuPage County. And so uh, in order to represent those, I was going to have to do 70 drawings to cover both male and female. I thought that's quite a large effort. So I decided to try and pare that down and I eliminated some species that I assume that we are not likely to see from below. Things like Connecticut warbler and morning warbler, uh, both of the water thrushes. So that eliminated eight drawings right away. And then I felt that there were some of the females of, of various species that it probably wasn't necessary to do those drawings as well. So I managed to get it down to 51 drawings, but this still looks very complicated. So the approach that I took was to break this down into two subgroups, one being um, birds that are streaked below and then those that are very plain uh, or at least have no streaking below. So that's the subset that we'll be dealing with today. And you can see none of these birds have any streaking, but you can take this group and break it down even further. It's quite obvious that you know, some of these birds have really a lot of yellow on them, and some of them are lacking yellow altogether. So you know, we end up being able to break this group down into two subgroups as well. So here's the group that has a lot of yellow on the underparts. And just right off the bat, you can see there are some differences. You can see the upper row, these have undertails that have a lot of white in them. And this row here, you can see that these undertails have uh, no white in them. Among the ones that have uh, white in the undertails, you can see that two of them have white undertail coverts. And then this species here, which is hooded warbler, has yellow undertail coverts. So you get start to get an idea of just how you can take the limited number of features that we have available when we're looking from below. Uh, but there's still enough there that you can start to you know, break these birds down into a more manageable um, problem ID. So to start with, here are those warblers that are all yellow below and have um, white in the undertails. So we have blue-winged warbler here, prothonotary warbler, and hooded warbler. And of the two that have the white undertail coverage, you can see this might be a, a little bit tricky. Uh, there are, they are quite similar. But on the blue-winged warbler, we have a very, very thin bill and we have a heavier bill. In fact, it's probably the heaviest billed uh, warbler that we have, the prothonotary warbler. Now that's going to be difficult to see way up in the trees, but that would be something that you could use to separate those two species. The other thing to look for would be the fact that the prothonotary warbler tends to look shorter tailed than a blue-winged warbler. So those would be your clues to look for in separating those two species. Of the other white undertailed um, species that we're dealing with here, the hooded warbler, the male is going to have an all black throat. So that should be quite easy to determine. That one's gonna really stand out. The female could be more difficult and she is uh, sometimes going to have a little bit of a grayish collar here, but that could be absent. So what you would be going on is the fact that you're dealing with a warbler that has no streaks on it at all it has white on the underside of the tail and it does have yellow undertail coverts. That would eliminate actually all other species uh, in the 35 that we deal with here in DuPage County. So here's the next subset of those really yellow undersided birds. And again, these are the ones that all have black tails or at least tails showing no white. And so we have Nashville warbler, Kentucky warbler, common yellow throat and Wilson's warbler. And again, there are some difficult separations in this group, uh, but there, there is something that we can hang our hat on on every one of these individuals. Nashville warbler, again, is going to be one of those very, very thin billed birds. But what you'll probably notice before you look at that is that uh, even though it is all yellow underneath, when you get down to where the feet are in the, the very lower part of the belly, you'll see that it actually turns to white. And so that would help you to separate Nashville warbler out from all of these others. We do have two species here that are completely yellow underneath, including the undertail coverts, that being the Kentucky warbler and the Wilson's warbler. And probably the best thing that you can do to separate these two species is to pay attention to how, how far out the undertail covers 
uh, lead on the on the underside of the tail. And Kentucky warbler will have undertail coverts that extend pretty far towards the uh, tip of the tail. And Wilson's warbler is going to be much shorter. Uh, that might be something fairly difficult to discern in the field, but at least it is something that you might be able to use to separate them. Also on Kentucky warbler, even from below, you might actually see the black uh, line that comes down uh, across the cheek of the bird and it makes it down into the mallard area. So you might be able to catch some of that as well. The uh, last species we have in this group is the common yellow throat. And again, we're dealing with a bird that shows a lot of yellow underneath, has the black tail. It does have yellow undertail covers. So where the separation is from all these other species is the fact that between the yellow throat and the yellow undertail covers, you do have an area that gets very pale except in the flanks, it's, it's a very, very olivey wash and no other warbler that we'll be dealing with uh, will have that, that combination on the under parts. So, uh, so that should be a, a relatively easy separation. So the next group that I wanted to treat uh, would be th those species that have a very buffy underside. And those three species would be worm-eating warbler, uh, bay-breasted warbler, and black-throated blue female. So the worm-eating warbler stands out amongst this group uh, because it has a, an all dark underside to the tail and the undertail coverts actually have little brown markings in them. So um, those two features alone would easily help you to separate worm-eating warbler from anybody else in the entire 35 group of warblers. A bay breasted warbler and black throated blue female both have the same uh, configuration of markings in the underside of the tail. The both, uh, both species show a lot of buff in the underside, but the bay-breasted warbler uh, male should be very easy to identify. It's very, very chestnut or bay colored all through the throat. And that comes all the way down into the uh, upper breast and into the flanks. On the female, she's going to be lacking the um, uh, bay color in the throat area, but she should in um, all species, all members that I've seen or all individuals that I've seen, the, uh, there is at least some hint of bay somewhere in the upper flanks at the very least. And so you should be able to pick up that, that bay color. So black-throated blue is lacking those features of these other two species. And just by process of elimination, we should be able to come up with that uh, identification as a black-throated blue warbler female. Her uh, buffy underparts are actually fairly uniform. And that too might be a, a clue for you in trying to separate that species out. So the next group that we're going to deal with has a very, very strong markings for the most part in the flanks. And so um, that would be chestnut sided warbler, American red start and black throated blue warbler male. So on the, in the case of the chestnut sided warbler, it's very, very white underneath. And you can see that the, even the underside of the tail is very, very white. Uh, you will see in both male and female, you'll see some amount of chestnut coming down the flanks. And in the case of the male, it's going to be very, very strong. So this is actually a pretty easy ID. Another one that's very easy is the American Red Star. The underside of the tail is very unique in that at the base of the tail, you're going to have all of this color. In the, in the case of the male, it's very orangish. And uh, in the case of the female, it, it uh, leans more towards uh, yellowish. And also in the upper flanks, you get those same colors. So on the female, you have that kind of yellowish uh, spot right here in the upper flanks. And in the case of the male, it's reddish. But in the case of the male, the, the throat is all black and that black extends down into the upper breast and then even carries on down into the flanks as well. And in the case of red starts, they also do have some little markings in the um, uh, under tail coverts. Not as strong and, and rich as you would see in something like a, a black and white warbler, but there are little fine markings in there. It makes the under tail coverts look a little bit dirty. Um, black throated blue warbler, you're going to be dealing with a bird that has an all black throat and then that black extends onto the, um, onto the upper breast and all the way down through the flanks. And in, um, let's say you were looking at a bird and you couldn't discern whether or not you were getting any of this red to help you separate it out between American Red Start and black throated blue warbler, you still would have that underside of the tail. In the case of black throated blue warbler, it does show a lot of white down there. So there are a lot of features basically that you can look at in order to make these separations. So in this group, we have golden winged warbler, orange crowned warbler and Tennessee warbler. And you can see that they're all, uh, they all have varying 
features that are going to make an easy separation. In the case of golden winged warbler, we again have a, a black throat, as we've seen on some other species. But we do have then a very pale gray or whitish underparts all the way through the rest of the bird, including the underside of the tail. The golden winged warbler female will not have a black throat, but it will be uh, a fairly noticeable dark throat. Uh, it'll be grayish in color. And perhaps the uh, underparts uh, will be maybe slightly grayer than what we were seeing on the, on the male. But still, those features are very unique compared to all the other birds that we're dealing with today. Orange crowned warbler uh, has a black tail uh, and very yellowish undertail covers. The rest of the underparts are very olivey in color. You may determine or uh, be able to identify the fact that there are you know, very, very diffuse streaking, but those are very, very faint. And so I elected to keep this bird in this non-streaked group rather than put it with the, uh, all the streaked underpart birds that we were talking about in part one of this series. So the last species on this uh, slide would be the Tennessee warbler. And certainly in the fall, there can be some confusions between Tennessee warblers and orange crowned warblers. But the good news is that since we're talking about birds that we can only see from, the, from below, and so we're gonna see all of the underparts, we're gonna see the key feature that's necessary for making that separation. In the case of Tennessee warbler, we're looking at very, very white uh, underside to that bird all the way down to the undertail coverts. And nothing else that we've discussed today uh, has a completely all white underpart like that. The female may show some yellowish wash across the upper breast and coming down into the flanks. And that might start to hint a little bit towards what orange crowned warbler looks like. And there would be even more yellow here on a, a, a fall version uh, of this species. But then when we, when we do get down to the undertail coverts, they're going to be very, very white. And so that would make for an easy separation between female Tennessee and the orange crowned. So birders are often frustrated by the lack of helpful features on warblers when seen from below. And certainly you know, it would be, it'd be great if we could see some of those other defining features uh, like some of the wing bars or some of the facial patterns, but the birds don't, don't always cooperate. And so sometimes all we get to see is an image like this, uh, but that's enough to go on, especially if you pay attention to a few key features. And those features would be the, the underside of the tail and how it's patterned, uh, the color of the undertail coverts, and then uh, what's going on with the breast? Uh, where do the colorations you know, change over from, let's say from yellow to white, or where are the streaks uh, concentrated? So there's enough actually going on in all, if you look at those three areas, there's, an, there's actually plenty of information, uh, certainly enough to make separations of, of pretty much all of those 35 warbler species that, that we have to deal with here in DuPage County. So just like anything else, it, it takes time and it takes practice. You're not going to memorize all of this instantly. But what you should at least do is memorize the fact that you need to look at those key areas, undertail patterning, the undertail coverts, and then you know, what ha is happening coloration-wise and pattern-wise on, uh, on the under parts, on the breast and the flanks. So uh, as long as you look, are uh, collecting all of the information on those areas, uh, you know, you should be able to then uh, key this bird out and, and e make an easy separation from, from the other species. So in this tutorial, we've reviewed only half of the warblers that can be seen in DuPage County. And as I mentioned, these are concentrated on, on all the species that we wouldn't expect to see any streaking on them. So the rest of the warblers possibilities are covered in warblers from below part one. So you can go and check out that tutorial as well uh, in order to complete this, a series on all of our 35 warblers that come through DuPage County. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we've given you some bird food for thought and I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.